Hi, and welcome to K Club Week Two. Let's get this slideshow started. <clears throat> so, today we'll be discussing the following topics um, what people are on your grant, research and training goals, specific aims, NIH Biosketch, the email to the program officer, and action items. So, who are the people on your grant? your primary mentor who has grant and mentoring success and takes overall responsibility for your training. Um, you can have several co-mentors who have grant and mentoring success. One or the other might work out just fine as well. Um, and these people are contributing to your training to help you gain future independence from your primary mentor. In terms of collaborators, consultants, and other significant contributors, let's break down uh, and define these people. So these people are generally not directly involved in your career development to help you gain independence. A collaborator is typically a scientist whose distinct expertise complements your own, while a co-mentor shares your area of expertise and therefore contributes in guiding the scientific direction of the overall project. So the collaborator provides unique expertise, whereas the co-mentor on your grant um, provides umbrella expertise. The consultant is uh, someone providing advice or services, often paid, and may participate significantly in the research, filling in smaller gaps. So a consultant might supply software, provide technical assistance, set up equipment, um, help with statistics, et cetera. And a contributor um, adds to the scientific development or execution of your project, but this person is not committing any spe specified measurable effort to your project. So on an as needed basis or an effort of zero person months in terms of your grant. So we'll discuss what other documents these people need to submit as we progress through this course. Um, primary mentor and co-mentors will be um, submitting statements about your training. Um, you will probably be writing the first draft of those though. Um, and then collaborators, consultant, and contributors will be providing letters of support. Um, most, if not all of these people need to give you their NIH bio sketches. And we're gonna go through what you need to include in those bio sketches in a few slides. There'll be other forms you need to fill out, um, designating who is senior and key personnel on your grant. We'll be going over that um, in later weeks. Some of these people you'll be writing into your budget and your budget justification, and we'll be covering that too in a several weeks. And all of these people need ERA Commons and linked ORC ID accounts. So we discussed those in week one. So you need to make sure that they all have those accounts. Okay, so on the top right, that's gonna be you starting today in terms of K grant writing. And as you can see below, there's an easy formula for grant writing that um, takes through 13 weeks to get through. Same length as this course. Okay, so today we're going to cover specific aims in red and NIH bio sketches. But first, research and training goals. So at this point, you should have talked with your primary mentor to come up with at least one of the goals, these goals each for the following. The K99 phase and the R00 phase. Next, you're going to incorporate these goals into your specific aims document. This is the most important page of your application and it's maximum of one page long. Don't worry about the page limit so much when you're writing drafts, worry about it um, closer to the end before you submit the grant. So this section outlines the significance, innovation and approach of your work in a concise format. And it explains what the positive outcomes of your grant will be if it is funded. Let's get to the nitty gritty. So this page can be divided into four sections or paragraphs that we'll go over in the next few slides. My dividing it into four paragraphs is just a stylistic preference. Your primary mentor might have other ideas as to how they like um, the sections in specific games split up. So it's important to note you'll be revising this page multiple times over the next six months after feedback from your primary mentor, at least one program officer, your grant co-mentors and anyone else on your grant team, including collaborators, and your peers and colleagues. So reach out to peers, ask them to read it. You wanna make sure it's understandable to people outside of your research area. So specific aims, what needs to be covered? You can see this chart on the left. 
First, you're going to talk about the gap or critical need in the literature that relates to your problem that you want to solve. You're going to talk about your objective of your proposal, your central hypothesis, your specific aims, and then the expected outcomes of your grant. So a good specific aims page tells an exciting, compelling story in four paragraphs. So you can think of this aims page sort of like you would think of a plot to a story. So you're going to start out with a beginning or setting the stage. You're going to uh, describe conflicts, um, point to the climax, and then a resolution of the story. So let's look at a research example. Let's say you're interested in sex differences in major depressive disorder. Your primary mentor suggested that you focus on bodily inflammation, which is currently a hot topic in psychiatry. So you analyze data comparing blood biomarkers of inflammation between four groups of people, men with MDD, women with MDD, and then healthy controls, uh, also men and women. You got significant results that you wanna turn into a grant. So let's say you found for biomarker one that MDD women had higher concentrations than control women, but you didn't find differences in males. Let's say you found the same thing for biomarker two. So you came up with a study design for your grant with your mentor, where you're gonna look at all four groups again, but you're gonna do a longitudinal study where you measure biomarkers one and two and clinical symptoms at two time points. So let's start with paragraph one, setting the stage. So what's the specific problem that you're tackling and why would solving this problem make a difference? What do you think should be the solution? What is your specific exciting approach to the problem? So you're gonna do a literature review to come up with knowns and unknowns, otherwise known as the gap or critical need in the literature regarding this problem. If this gap or critical need isn't solved, what bad things will happen? So let's go through the literature review. Let's say the knowns are that MDD is an often chronic relapsing illness, 50% do not respond to antidepressants or therapy, so we need new innovative treatments that help this 50% get better. Some researchers propose that MDD is linked to inflammation um, measured by blood-based biomarkers. Let's say that um, two studies that are published show this group effect where MDD have higher levels than control on biomarker one, and this is um, cross-sectional data. Let's say that one study shows a sex effect where women have higher levels than men on biomarker two, but again, this is cross-sectional data. So what are the unknowns or gaps or critical need? Is there a subset of MDD with blood-based inflammation that makes depression worse over time? If we know this, we can test whether anti-inflammatories can help these people get well. So reducing the percentage of people who are treatment resistant. So there are no studies in the literature examining group by sex interactions in these biomarkers one and two. So maybe there's more MDD inflammation in a subset of women. There are no longitudinal studies identifying where the, whether these biomarkers predict future depression severity. So that is the goal of your research project for your K. So first paragraph, opening sentences, opening sentence, there's two parts that you should cover. So you want to hook the reviewer's attention, focusing on something that highlights the problem that will be addressed by your application. And uh, secondly, you wanna highlight the NIH's mission to apply research findings to enhance health, length and life and reduce illness and disability. So you wanna go dark. What is so horrible about the problem that you're interested in tackling? Um, and how will you addressing the problem um, enhance health and reduce illness and disability? So we know MDD is associated with a host of horrible things like suicide, early mortality rates, uh, years life lost due to disability, um, emotional dysfunction, et cetera, et cetera. So you really wanna go dark in terms of highlighting statistics related to the problem you're studying and discussing how this is uh, related to NIH's mission. Then you're gonna report the knowns. So three to five sentences, stick close to the plot, try not to go off on tangents. Um, you want to um, talk about the, the knowns directly relevant to your project and then get to the unknowns. So once you get to do uh, report the unknowns, that can typically be a sentence. You wanna sum up all the things that you don't know that are relevant to your proposal, which will cover those unknowns. This is the start of the conflicts part of the plot. 
um, be dramatic. Then you're gonna have a statement of critical need or else. So this is one to two sentences where you frame the unknowns as a problem that demands a solution now. What explicitly is needed that will drive your grant proposal? What bad things will happen if this problem isn't solved? Will mosquito bites fly in between grant reviewers' toes? No, but so the whole point is, you, you know, setting up why this is critic, this your proposal is critically needed at this moment. And if it isn't figured out, you know, how many people, how many years of um, life is gonna, are gonna be lost uh, in, in MDD patients. Okay, so that's the first paragraph. Now we're gonna go to the second paragraph, which covers objective and central hypothesis. So what's your study objective and central hypothesis? What is your long-term goal of this research? What is your short-term goal of this study and how does it relate to the long-term goal? For this study, what will you do? What kind of design will you use? Who will be your participants? And why is this the best design to answer the, un the gap unmet need? Again, what is the central hypothesis of your study and how did you come up with it? Um, did you have your own preliminary data? Uh, or is it based on the literature? And what will be the next step if your central hypothesis from this project is supported? So we're gonna cover all of this in paragraph two and we'll go uh, piece by piece through this paragraph. So you can see these examples here, you're setting up first with a long-term goal. So uh, in the cartoons, long-term, I wanna enhance my leadership skills and ascend the corporate ladder. Short-term, I wanna enjoy a mocha latte. Sounds familiar. Okay, uh, my short-term goal is to bluff my way through this job interview. My long-term goal is to invent a time machine so I can come back and change everything I've said so far. So one sentence you're gonna say, what's the big picture of your research program that's related to public health? So NIH's mission, and goes beyond the current project, but is related to it. So this could be like a whole sort of career goal in terms of what you wanna, the overarching research that you would like to conduct during your career. The overall objective or short-term goal, um, explain in a sentence what this study seeks to accomplish and make sure to link it to the unmet need in paragraph one and your long-term goal. Emphasize the product you aspire to provide, not the process that will produce it. So what is the end short-term goal of this project? Then you wanna explain study design. Uh, discuss anything about participants that are relevant to the specific aims of your study, like for studying blood biomarkers, typically you include age, body mass index, um, and other covariates in your analyses. So you can mention them here to make it clear that you're covering your bases. You want to um, explain your groups with sample sizes and any variables of interest that are relevant. You wanna talk about how often data is collected and what kind of data are collected. Um, and then you're gonna to get to the central hypothesis. So here you're gonna, after you set up the design of your study, you are gonna um, take one or two sentences to explain your best bet out of all the possibilities as to how you can meet your overall objective. So explain how this was formulated. Was it based on your own preliminary data or other published studies? And if it was based on preliminary data, mention what you found. Then you wanna to get to the rationale for funding the study. So in one sentence, tell the reviewers what will be possible after your research study is completed that is not possible now. So those are the first two paragraphs. Now we're gonna get into the specific aims uh, nitty gritty. So here we're at the story climax. What are your specific aims related to your central hypothesis? I would do maximum three aims um, for a K. I feel like two is plenty, but um, your primary mentor might have something to say about that. So explain how you will test specific parts or components of your central hypothesis from paragraph two. Make each aim brief, informative, and open-ended, followed by at least one specific directional hypothesis. The first aim should flow logically into the second aim, which should flow logically into the third aim, if you've got a third aim. But no aim should be dependent on an outcome of a previous aim. So um, for a specific aim one, you might focus on cross-sectional results um, and specific aim two, longitudinal results, but you don't want the longitudinal results to be dependent on the cross-sectional results. So you wanna make them in those aims independent of each other in some way. 
So let's go through an example. So here I'm setting up specific aim one to be cross-sectional. So I want to, my aim is to identify whether sex moderates the relationship between MDD and biomarker inflammation at baseline. And my hypothesis is based on our pilot data, we predict a group by sex interaction such that within women but not men, MDD will show significantly higher levels of biomarker one and biomarker two than controls at baseline. So I have my overall aim and then at least one directional hypothesis. My aim two is going to be longitudinal. So it is going to be identifying the degree to which baseline biomarker inflammation predicts follow-up depression symptoms within MDD, accounting for sex and baseline depression symptoms. You can see here that my overall aim has nothing to do with group results at baseline. My hypothesis is we predict that above and beyond baseline depression symptoms and in sex, greater baseline biomarker one and two inflammation will be sig significantly predict higher depression symptoms at follow up. So then we're done with the third paragraph and we are almost done. We just got to cover expected outcomes. So this is thought of as the payoff and the resolution. So what can the reviewers expect to gain from uh, recommending funding for your project? There should be at least one expected outcome for each aim and they should collectively relate to your overall objective from paragraph two and your long-term goal essentially. So if you want to develop uh, innovative treatment targets for treatment resistant MDD, um, potentially linked to high inflammation, um, funding your grant will enable you to determine if there's a subset of MDD, particularly women that have high um, peripheral based blood inflammation. Um, and then generality regarding positive impact. So in play, explain in one sentence how your expected results will positively advance your field of research. Well, in, in this example, you're going to gain more knowledge about um, the relationship between inflammation um, and sex differences and mood disorders. For example, there are many other sort of ways you can frame this section, so be creative. So it's important to note that somewhere in your specific aims, you want to mention how this project will give you the skills to transition into an independent investigator position. The sentence may fit best in paragraph four of the payoff. So what do the reviewers get that for funding um, your project? They're going to be funding also your salary. So and your training and skills, extra classes, any sort of travel to conferences. So um, you can include this, um, you know, Grant funding will enable you to develop as an independent investigator. Let's switch gears to the NIH biosketch. So this is max five pages long. Yours might be considerably shorter because you're a ju more junior investigator, but this section allows you to describe the magnitude and significance of your scientific contributions, including publications and provide detailed info about your research experience and skills within the context of this project. So who fills this out? You, anyone on your K mentorship team, and typically collaborators, consultants, and most other significant contributors. So right now we're just gonna focus on your biosketch. Um, many of the people on your team will already have a biosketch that they will need to edit to fit to your project. So there are forms, instructions, and samples available at grants.nih.gov. Um, so you can take the newest version of their bio sketch and edit it to uh, fit your, your own skills and your own project and your own info. So this is what the form looks like. Under your name, it's gonna ask for your ERA Commons username, which you will have already gotten that account set up, um, your position title and your education and training. So this is just basic info about yourself. Next, um, at the bottom of that page in section A, here is why you, where you make your case as to why you're well suited for your role in your project. So I have the expertise, leadership, training, and motivation to carry out this project. And then you're gonna list your skills. So get ready to brag about yourself a little bit. So what to include in this section? Key aspects of your training, past experience, technical expertise, significant collaborations and past performance important for the success of this project. Here you can explain anything else you'd like the reviewers to know about your career and research directions. 
So say you're proposing work in a new direction or any personal or family situations impacting your work. You can provide up to four publications or research products that are related to your skills or expertise in the area related to your proposed K projects. You also need to include PMC IDs for your publications that you present here in your personal statement section and in other sections of this bio sketch. So information, uh, just Google online PMC ID and you'll find information about that. If there's not a PMC ID for a particular paper, you can just say no PMC ID to cover your bases. Okay, section B, positions and honors. So first you're gonna list your positions and employment. Um, if you have any clinical licensure info, you would put um, it in here in terms of other experience and pro professional memberships. If you've been asked to review articles for journals, you can list that in this section. Teaching experience could also go here if the topic is relevant to your project and travel and poster awards under honor should definitely be included. Contributions to science. So section C is where you discuss um, since you started in research, um, your specific contributions to various literatures. So you can list up to five significant contributions, but it would make sense if you just had one or two at this stage in your career. So each section would be labeled C1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Each one is about half a page with up to four publications, and you can cite conference proceedings like abstracts, posters, or other presentations. You can also submit a hyperlink to an online bibliography, but it must be hosted on a federal government website, and you can register and create one at the link below. So if you have different topics that you studied in grad school, so say um, for a couple of years you studied depression and another couple of years you switched to anxiety, um, and with depression you looked at brain stuff and anxiety you looked at blood immune function stuff, I would think that would the depression stuff would be C1 and the anxiety stuff would be C2. So grants.nih.gov has a bunch of frequently asked questions about biosketches, so you can go there for all of your questions uh, regarding what to include or not include. Uh, section D, so often young investigators, junior investigators don't have much in this section, but here uh, you're listing research support. So any ongoing and completed research support. So if you don't have any, you can just say none for this section, but let's say you were hired as a postdoc on someone else's grant, then you would put that information in here. So to summarize, make it personal, tell the reviewers about you, your career, and your expertise, particularly in section A. This is where you tell the reviewers that you are the most qualified investigator to do the work you're proposing. So reviewers are instructed that publication track records for junior investigators will not match more senior investigators, but they do wanna see at least some publications in the research area you're going into, unless you're applying for something like a K01, which, um, a grant, which is a grant application targeted for people who are we're going into a new area. Try not to speak into too many technical terms. Write it so your family members can maybe understand what you're trying to say, because a lot of the reviewers won't be experts in your research area. Be clear and to the point. Define your terms. Okay, so you have your specific aims draft and bio sketch. You're gonna send that to your primary mentor. And then when you get feedback and edit it, you can draft an email to the program officer. So briefly introduce yourself and your degree, training, area of research, and your current position. Explain that you plan to submit a K and say which, mecha you know, which mechanism and what, um, what specific deadline you're applying for. Is it October? Is it February? Is it June? Listing the FOA you plan to apply under. Explain your research project and training goals for the grant in three to four sentences max and be specific in your request for feedback on whether the project and your specific aims would be of interest to this branch division um, program of the Institute. Attach your aims in your bio sketch um, and wait for feedback. In terms of homework, let's go through action items for this week. So write drafts of your aims and bio sketch and get feedback from your primary mentor. Search for a program officer fitting your research and send an email to this person attaching your aims and your bio sketch.
Email investigators to ask if they will be part of your K mentorship team after confirming with your primary mentor that these people are okay or make sense to ask. Also attach your aims and bio sketch to those emails. And if they're interested in joining the team, request feedback on both of these documents in reply. Treat yourself to a break after all of this hard work. You're doing great. <laughs>